Hi everyone! Today I'd like to show you a few tips and tricks for handling just a few challenges that arise when you're sewing the smallest or the tallest sizes of the removable wire mask. So, let's get sewing! Alright, so the first thing that's different about sewing one of the tall sizes is the proportion of the upper edge has a much curvier, wavier look to it for this size. And in order to get comfortable fit after you turn this mask right side out, instead of doing just one notch at the bridge of the nose, it's better if you do two or three notches. And this removes extra fabric so that when we fold it back inside, it doesn't bunch up over the nose. Now the eye scoops are also deeper in the men's tall and they will lie flat if you just snip them like this. So the uh, rule is that if the edge of your material is shorter than the stitching line, that's when you only need to snip like this with a single cut. And when the edge of your material, the cut edge of your material is longer than your stitching line, that's when you need to remove material with those little notches. So a few snips and a few notches, and while you're at it, it's really not going to hurt to cut that off at the two corners. So that's your trimming stage, and after this, you're ready to turn the mask right side out. Okay, so here's a men's tall where I've already gone ahead and installed the ties and uh, turned the mask right side out, done all the finger pressing. And um, this video is a companion video to the longer video that shows all the construction steps. So I've skipped those for now to focus on some of the challenges of the smallest and the tallest sizes. So I wanted to show you what happens when you apply the bias channel to the mask that has the waviest, steepest nose bridge and the waviest upper edge. So bias uh, stretches even though it's woven, and that's why we're using it to go around this curve. But notice how when you stretch it, it gets narrower. So what's going to happen is when we, I'm just stretching it back right now because that was a bit assertive, what I just did to it, and it was just for demonstration. When we apply this to this steeper curve that this size has, we're going to lose some width right here. And so you cut the channel, uh, as I've stated on the pattern, you cut the channel a little bit wider for this size. One and three quarters is what I've used. You, you could really go even a little wider, um, but this will make things a bit simpler when we sew. So I'm just uh, lining it up, roughly getting that centered, and we start this channel operation from the back of the mask. I'm just holding things in place and sort of walking this around the corner to get back to my starting point. The bias is going to be compressing right here and stretching right there. And that's what it will do for us. So, bear with me while I just give my husband a good view and while I get everything positioned. It always pays to be careful at the beginning of this operation. So because that's true, I'm going to make sure to lower my needle. And again, your stitching line should be an eighth of an inch or a bit less from the edge and you want all of your edges flush for this operation. So we're going to take this a little bit on the slow and careful side as we go around. And then when I flip it around to the other side, you'll see why it was a good thing that we made the channel a little bit wider. And we'll see a few little ways that we need to compensate for how it looks once we flip it around. So right here at the very peak is where I'm going to need to massage your bias a little bit. Get it to mold around that nice high curve, but that nice high curve is part of what gives the masks a good fit. And also the reason that you can't just add width 
to a mask at the sides if you want a wider mask is because I've proportioned the upper edge of each size um, to maintain the right ratio between the nose area and the eye area so we can't just add at the sides and a man with a long face may have a sharper larger nose and these deeper scoops for the eyes seem to be helpful so there we go we've stitched it on and now just a little bit of uh, finger pressing here is going to be worth the time we'll press that up with our hands give that a bit of a nice crease before you rotate it around to the front and uh, you can probably already see how much narrower it is right there than it is right there. So we flip it around to the other side. And I happen to already know, okay, so this is enough fabric. But I happen to already know that you're going to want to pull it nice and tight right here over the nose bridge. And you're not going to need to be doing that as much at the end. So you see, because the bias did not have to stretch, in this part of the curve, it looks wider right here. And because it did have to stretch in this part of the curve, it looks narrower right there. Now this is really more aesthetic than functional, but if you want your channel to end up looking sort of the same width all along instead of looking wider down here, then just don't pull this one, don't tug at the two ends the same way you're gonna tug in the center. And it'll come out looking um, pretty symmetrical for you. So. Again, what you're shooting for, um, as explained in the longer version of the tutorial, is you want, it's very important to leave one eighth of an inch, a good eighth of an inch, to the left of your needle. It does not matter anywhere near as much if you have a one eighth of an inch to the right of your needle. Alrighty, so we've got our needle an eighth of an inch from the left hand edge of the channel. As you approach the highest point, the temptation is going to be to start to narrow the amount that's to the left of your needle, and you don't want to really do that. Um, it's a little more challenging to get the wire through the channel in this size because the channel is so steeply curved, so you don't want to lose any uh, channel width as you go over the top there. And, uh, Let's see whether I took my own advice. So then all of this again becomes simpler when you get down to this end. And again, you don't need to tug as hard a, on this as you fold it over the edge and let that um, visually match the width of the uh, center portion over the nose bridge. Now, in the normal course of events here, we would just continue sewing to make our uh, corner, but I would like to take this out now for the demo and take a look at what we accomplished. So I'm just going to end the thread there. So, okay, so there's your uh, channel. I'm reasonably pleased with that. It looks almost the same width at the ends than the middle, So, but I had to pull harder here and less hard here and here. I left a full one eighth of an inch to the left of the stitching line. I know that that's a nice adequate channel. Maybe that's even a little more than an eighth, but we had the material to work with. So that's what it looks like to put the channel on the uh, men's uh, lawn. And I'll just mention that, of course, with the um, men's sizes, when you pleat the side, the uh, finished length is going to be larger than the finished length of uh, the women's average mask. And I, I give uh, some guidance for that in the uh, PDF pattern. But if the first mask that you make is one of the women's average sizes, uh, you'll have a sense of what the proportions are of the whole mask, and you um, will find it pretty easy to fold this on the fly. So that's what I wanted to show you about the men's long. So the other size that I wanted to show you that presents uh, a little bit of a challenge is my smallest size. So the smallest size has the smallest um, little corner right there. And I happen to know that as we go around that corner, inserting the ties, 
that um, we're going to need to be a little bit careful on that corner because everything is smaller. So one thing that I did is I made my ties narrower. So the starting piece of fabric for this cute little tie was only seven eighths of an inch wide. I normally cut one and a quarter. This time I cut a little less than one inch, seven eighths of an inch wide. So then it's going to be skinnier inside and I wanted that because I'm trying to not sew over it in a way that I don't want to when I come along here and having it a little bit narrower uh, should help. So uh, the other thing as a little bonus that viewers of this little supplementary video are going to find out that viewers of the longer video don't know yet is that if you're not doing elastic and you are doing ties, the most efficient way to get this first tie in place is to position it in the corner, position the long end as if it's going to hang out the uh, center bottom opening because that's exactly what it's going to do. Uh, don't have it up here as if you're about to demonstrate the insertion of the elastic. It will just get in your way. And put your presser foot down with all of this hanging down out the bottom already. And you will find that this um, is the simplest way. Okay, so needle down. The seam allowances are still half an inch, even for this mask size. And it's important when you first touch the mask with your needle, don't sew all the way into the very, excuse me, when you first touch the tie with your needle in the corner, don't keep sewing until you reach the very corner. Pivot and take a few stitches right over the tie. And in fact, I'm actually going to shorten my stitch length a little bit compared to my usual 2.8 down to about 2.4 um, because you'll have a little bit um, more control over the corners, more chance of um, catching the uh, tie with your stitches, which you want, and um, less chance of overshooting when you're uh, heading for a corner uh, on such small pieces of fabric. Now, normally, um, you can come a little closer to a corner before you put in the next tie, but for this second tie, you're kind of stuck between the basting that you previously did, see the other video, um, and this corner, and you have to thread this, tie number two has to be threaded through this uh, space. So it's a little easier to do that when you're a little further away from this corner than you need to be with the other corners. So uh, let me just, by way of quick review, um, allow the camera to take a look at the fact that the right side of the tie is facing up, so it's touching your front fabric piece. And it's inside there at a 45 degree angle. Now, towards that corner, and here comes where it's a little bit um, more interesting for the smaller mask. So I'm going to just take it nice and slow right here. I can feel with my fingers that I've just met the tie. Everything is fine. I'm going to take a stitch or two right across the tie. And now when I turn to continue around, what I don't want to do is I don't want this, the edge of this tie, I don't want it to be so high up at an angle over here that I will be in danger of sewing along the edge of it. We've just touched it as much as we want to touch it. We've crossed the corner, so now I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing the one that I just put in there. I'm pulling it sideways in this direction to get it out of the path of my needle. So now I can go across a little bit here because we do have this um, little horizontal bit here. Another one or two stitches. And now I can start to traveling along the eye scoop and I can feel and see that my needle is not going to touch the edge of that tie because if it does, you will be getting friendly with your seam ripper because when you turn it right side out, it, um, uh, you will clearly see that you have a problem. So we'll just carry on. in case you would like to watch. So I scoop number two. Now for inserting tie number three, you do want to stop when you're several inches away so that you have um, plenty of maneuvering room. See how I need to have the space uh, in order to flip this back. And if we were already all the way up here with our presser foot, it would be harder to do. 
So there that goes in, maintaining our, our little angle here. So now we're going to approach the same situation from this direction. I'd like the camera to just show you uh, the location of the tie in the corner. What we're going to want to do when we approach it through the sandwich is we don't want to sew along the edge of this tie. So we just want to come up to the tie and then cross it at a neat angle without catching this part right here in our eye scoop uh, sewing. So let's see how I do. Slowly is a good idea. Okay, you can probably see the edge of it right there. I can tell that I'm about an eighth of an inch away from it with my needle. And now, one more stitch, and now I'm going to head across the corner there. Okay, turn. Now this is such a short little side that really it's already time to put in the, the next corner. So flip that in right side up and um, it'll hang out the center of the bottom but have it come up and loop because you don't want to catch it again with your foot when you travel across the bottom okay across our corner and turn and you can see that your foot is not going to touch that which is good because we don't want to touch that a second time. Now we are going to take the time to clip this and turn it right side out. So you will, this is one of the, uh, this size has a fairly shallow upper curve. So you're probably only going to need to notch this once and at most snip it once here and here. You can cut the corners off if you like. And now let's uh, see how we did with our ties. Okay, I think those first two are okay. So there we go. Now you can take a look at the ties, and they're emerging at the uh, right angle. Um, nobody got uh, sewn in. If I had made the mistake that I was trying to save you from, it would have been, you would have seen this tie sort of squinched into this edge or squinched into this edge. When you see it coming out at this angle, um, things are going to be fine. Now at this point, what we would be doing next if we were finishing the whole mask, in case you're wondering where our curve went, is this is the moment where you would do some finger pressing and you'll find that your curve really is there. But for those details, you can view the longer video. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to show you as a PS is once you've sewn all the way around, uh, done your snipping, if you would like to check and make sure that your ties came out at a good angle before you go to the trouble of turning it right side out and then maybe discovering one of them isn't right and having to turn it and turn it and turn it, if you will take it over to a window and hold it up, we could not get a good picture of that for you, so I'm going to show it to you over a cell phone flashlight. But you see, you can use any bright light to see whether your tie came out at a good angle. So those are the tips. Please feel free to leave any comments or questions. I'd be glad to reply. And to watch every step in the construction of this mask, please watch our longer tutorial. I'll link to it in a moment, or you can also find the link below. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.